Once again, we find ourselves staring down the barrel of a loaded booster as we rapidly approach what might be the ninth flight of Starship. Kicking it off with another Starbase summary. No quotes around the title here. This may look familiar, though. Previously, we may have referred to this as, air quotes, Test Tank 17, and we're updating some of our labelings based on uh, some information that this should actually be Booster 18.1, or at least a test article for Booster 18.1. So here you go. You can see the protrusions coming out of those holes that we've been talking about at a bit of an angle there, some wires or cabling or something like that hanging off the right-hand side, but this is not the start of the show. Or I guess this is not the star of the show is the way the saying is supposed to go. This tank is headed out to Massey's for some testing. But we've got static fires coming up, and we've got booster rollout coming up for Starship Flight 9. They built housing in our shot! We used to be able to see Massey's a little bit better, and then they put structures in the way. That's okay, we got other shots of Massey's as well. Here is Ship 35 rolling out to Massey's, going around the backside of the assembly yard there, not coming out the front where they're still demolishing the high bay. At this point, what's left of the high bay. But it's going to make its way over to Highway 4 in a delightful daytime rollout. There's the high bay playing a chess or checkers. You take your pick in the background. And here is the ship rolling out for testing. We're going to go forward, go back a little bit. Can let some cars pass. There you go. Don't want to hold up the traffic. And it, it lets the cars pass in the exact right position for us to get that great shot right there near our river camera site. But it does make its way all the way over to Massey's. More flames will be coming from that later in the video. We're going to go ahead and start tearing up the ground outside of the high bay. They're going to need to uh, put in some massive footings for the mega bay, or the giga bay, actually, is what's going to go there. So we'll see them tearing up the concrete. If you've been over on Starbase Live, that has been happening daily. Cut to some gratuitous spark slow motion. Cutting those pieces off the Star Factory. Still looking for a hole in the schedule to release that video. Maybe if this video gets enough comments demanding that... How is that safe? Just, just like timber a piece of steel? Is that legitimate? Is that a legitimate strategy for disassembling a building? I guess so. Good grief. Anyways, if we get enough comments down below, maybe we'll get some more... Uh, Spark footage. Maybe Jack should add this spark footage to that spark footage. Because this is definitely, I mean, you know, I'm not an expert, but this is some spark footage. Yardage. Meterage? D SD cartage? Whatever. It sparks in slow motion. You love it. Big thanks to Jack for being out there. To capture this, of course, what's going on in this shot specifically, they are disassembling those parts of the Star Factory that uh, will make room for the Gigabay, and we expect the Gigabay to be directly attached to the Star Factory, which will be a big change. Um, massive change there. If those things are all connected together and you don't even have to go outside in order to get a booster out from the uh, from the Star Factory or a booster ship, whatever parts you're putting together, you uh, stack them in the bays, the big gigabays or mega bays, and you don't even have to go outside. Maybe they're just going to have a little walkway. Now look at this. They're, they're hauling on the yards there <laughs> or whatever. And if you thought that steel girder was girdery before, how you like them apples? I am really surprised. That looked like there was a little bit of a lever arm there and the potential to catapult some of those pieces that came flying off. And there seem to be people downrange of that. But in any event, it's got to come down to make way for the Giga Bay. We're going to bring it back over to Massey's now, and we are going to see an aborted static fire. The first go-around, they had a little bit of trouble here. Um, the first go-around... Yeah, it's not the first go-around for this ship. This is like the, the third, fourth, fifth. It's quite a few go-arounds to get that thing going. But the first one was aborted. Later in the video, they did make it work. Though, some more work on the exposed ribs of the Star Factory. Are they the ribs on top? I mean, your ribs sort of go vertically. I guess if the Star Factory was laying down, its ribs could be in that configuration, and they've just performed, like, thoracic surgery on the thing. But it's really, like, the edge of the Star Factory. 
I don't know. We have any doctors who watch these videos who can give me a good, like, human body analog of what exactly they're cutting up there? Here we're still tearing out pieces, getting all of that scrap, the big girders and stuff. They're cutting off, and then they are uh, taking those out in these big scrap wagons. But uh, waste not, want not. Still good steel underneath the old steel there, or the surface of the steel. And here we're getting into another big event. You can see that launch mount. We had a whole video about that. We covered it live. We talked about it in Starbase Update, all the different ways we keep you up to date with what's going on. But here you can see they did a little bit of a test lift to get started. And we see this a lot, especially with larger, more, I'm not going to say it's a complicated shape. Maybe it has a complicated center of mass, but they, they get it under the crane and they hook up to it and they pick it up a little bit to make sure it's in balance, to make sure they can move it like they think. You don't want to get halfway in the air and realize there's a little imbalance or something like that. Uh, that piece, since they're taking it off the high bay, they just sort of strap up to it and go. It's going to the ground anyways. So uh, slightly different when you need to do a precision maneuver like this. You can see the gantry over on the side there. Here's the shot from the side of the road. Just picking it up, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down, adjusting things, picking it up, putting it down. And then finally, they go for it, reading the instructions right there on the side of the launch mount. Clearly says in large friendly letters, stack me. We'll just we'll just toss that out there. That's what it says on the screen. You can see. And the motion here in fast forward, the time lapse makes this look a little bit worse. You're also going to get some perspective tricks played on you. There are some places in this video where it looks like a person is underneath this thing, and they're up close to the crane. The arm of the crane has it out. They're spotting it from different angles. Uh, but here, like, see the people on the side. It almost looks like the people are just underneath the thing, but they're guiding it in from the side of the gantry, the top of the leg there, getting it aligned. I love how that little door is just perfectly positioned for them to hop inside when this thing gets down. But we're looking, we're watching, move it over a little bit, check it, don't stick your hands under there. Learn that one from experience. And then, ah, oh, suddenly there's people inside of it. The little hatches and entryways. But this was just a massively complicated operation. Two crane drivers working in tandem to pick up this 1,000-ton-plus piece of very specifically shaped steel. I mean, it's shaped so that it can hold a booster, right? Here it looks like we're looking at some, some measurements or some plans or looking at some uh, sensor readouts on something or, or something like that on the phone. But just look at the scale of the, the tackle, the equipment that is actually connecting the cranes, plural, two cranes, to that launch mount with the people next to it. They're getting it uh, scooted around. There we, this is, we're starting again here. We've scrolled back and this is the time lapse of the whole operation from another angle. But they pick it up, they move it over, and then all of a sudden you have people walking around on top of it. That is like a uh, ballet there but that is not all that happens at spacex they don't just build big buildings to support rockets they also test rockets so back over massey's ways here's a static fire ship over there getting ready for its flight it's ship 35 this was a air quotes full duration static fire long duration went on for about 60 seconds if you want to watch the whole thing, remember, hey, these are all cut together so that we don't show you uh, 60 seconds from this angle and 60 seconds from this angle and 60 seconds from this angle. This is all timed and synchronized. So as these shots are cutting between the different angles, it represents a linear video of the 60 second static fire, like all together from different angles. If you want to watch this with the sound, remember, go over to the audio settings, click down to Klingon, it'll turn off my voice, scroll it back again, play it as many times as you'd like, uh, but this is edited together to represent the 60 second static fire. Looking way cleaner than previous attempts with Ship 35 over there. But again, can't stress it enough, gonna explain about what's going on here in the commentary track. It's like the director's cut on the old DVDs. If any of you are old enough to remember that, you are welcome to scroll it back and switch to Klingon and just get the raw sounds of the static fire. Oh, if you want to see it from any one of those angles without changing, you could also watch it over on, uh, we have some member content, we do some replays like that on the live streams, but there we just gave it to you once in 60 seconds. We've got a rollout 
happening now. This is booster 14.2 heading on the way out to the launch site. This, of course, the booster that will be reflown. First super heavy booster flying more than once as part of Starship Flight 9. So it headed out to the launch pad. They're going to look around the SPMTs. This is, perfectly, this is a perfectly normal thing. Like, while they're going, sometimes you see them checking things. Maybe they got an alarm or a buzzer or something like that. Uh, what's getting me is the small number of wheels. It's like not as many wheels on this thing, right? Because it is just the booster as opposed to the entire launch mount. Of course, this is one of the two SPMT assemblies used for the rollout, but it suddenly it looks like it's not very many wheels, right? Anyways, you all saw the rollout of the big OLM. Making its way over there. There on the back of the SPMTs, you can see the counterweights really well, keeping that center of mass low. Booster's big... Booster's not that heavy when it's empty, right? It doesn't have anything but air in it right now, so uh, it doesn't weigh as much as you think. Like, compare the booster rollout to the space shuttle rollout or SLS rolling out. When space shuttle rolled out, when SLS rolled out, the solid rocket motors on either side of the, the, the stack were filled with propellant. Solid rocket motors. You don't mix it and pour it out at the pad. You make those things in, in big castings. You put them together. You stack them in the VAB. And all of the mass of that propellant, the solid propellant in the motors, is there when the crawler transporter rolls it out. Um, SLS stack was, was, I think it's something like 7,000 tons when it rolls. The OLM weighed 1,000-something tons when it rolled. Boosters don't weigh anywhere near that. So uh, massive structures moving around here. Little bit of a little little tricky because they're hollow here when you're looking at a booster, and they don't have any of the SRB problems where you have to make the SRBs filled with all their fuel back at the factory. You can put the booster on the launch mount and then pump its liquid propellants into it, that liquid methane and liquid oxygen that you use for flight. You do not have to transport it down the road filled with any of that fuel. But for now, that's going to cover it. We've got a static fire. We've got a booster rollout. Dates for Flight 9 rapidly approaching. We've seen the 21st of May, some 22nd of May in there based on NOTAMs. May go a little further than that because we don't see the ship out there yet. But we're going to keep you informed as to what's going on out there at Starbase. My name's John. Appreciate you hanging out with me, and we will see you nerds later.